Hongkong. One of the wealthiest cities in the world. But by the 1980s, this center of global commerce found itself under siege. From the air. The city had grown up around its tiny airport, but had long since outgrown it. Now, the constant onslaught of huge commercial jetliners was endangering the lives of residents. And the airport's tiny size was threatening to choke off the lifeblood of the city. Trade. Hong Kong desperately needed a new world-class airport. But where to put it? There was only one option. to build it 16 miles out at sea. But that would require the largest engineering project in history. It would mean building the longest bridges in the world and massive new underwater tunnels, 22 miles of new superhighway and high-speed rail. Builders estimated the project would take decades. But they were given only seven years. Could engineers and builders working on an absurdly tight deadline pull off a project this extreme? And would building such colossal structures only invite disaster in the future? July 6th, 1998. New York's JFK Airport. Cathay Pacific Flight 889 prepares for takeoff. It's bound for Hong Kong, but it's about to fly into a great unknown. The pilots have made this trip hundreds of times before, but never like this. Because even as the plane lifts off in New York, in Hong Kong, the airport suddenly goes dark. It's not a power failure. This is an historic event. The culmination of nearly a decade of furious planning and construction. Hong Kong has just shut down one of the world's major international airports. And with planes en route, is moving the entire operation, staff and equipment, to a new one in only seven hours. It's the final hurdle in a seven-year race to complete the largest, most ambitious civil engineering project of the 20th century. It all began in the 1980s. when Hong Kong faced a critical turning point. By then, it had become one of the world's great economies. But these towering skyscrapers masked a glaring weakness. Kai Tak Airport. Dangerous and outdated, the airport sat crammed in the heart of the city. Kai Tak made every flight into Hong Kong a white knuckle flirtation with disaster, forcing massive jumbo jets to steer past mountains and skim the tops of apartment buildings in order to reach the tarmac. Six accidents or near misses occurred at Kai Tak in the last two decades. 
In this accident in 1993, the plane overshot the runway, injuring 22 and killing two. And there was another enormous problem. Cargo. The airport had only one runway. It had become a major bottleneck to global trade. Hong Kong could not continue with his existing airport in terms of passengers, and even more important, in terms of cargo. Hong Kong is the biggest international airport in terms of cargo in the world. With billions of dollars at stake, Hong Kong needed a new airport. But where? The city was jam-packed. Without a shred of available land, there was only one possibility. Build the airport at sea. The proposal was mind-boggling. It called for the creation of a new island in the South China Sea. On that island, a massive new air facility, capable of handling the world's largest jets and the single largest passenger terminal on Earth. But this massive airport was itself only a small fraction of the overall project. To get passengers and freight to and from the airport quickly, the plan also called for 22 miles of new super highways and tunnels and a new high-speed rail system, as well as the world's longest double-decker suspension bridge. Hong Kong's planners knew that without a new airport, the city would soon no longer be competitive in the global marketplace. But age-old politics threatened to stop the project in its tracks. Hong Kong, a British possession, was about to be returned to China. More than a century earlier, during the Opium Wars, Britain had captured Hong Kong from China. But as part of the peace treaty, Britain had agreed to return the territory after 100 years. Now that due date was a mere seven years away. Many dreaded the impending handover, fearing that China would put an abrupt end to Hong Kong's capitalist economy. If the new airport was still unfinished when they took over, would the Chinese agree to complete it? There was only one way to ensure that the airport would be done. Finish it before the takeover. The airport was uh, the pawn in, in this huge game of chess, the political chess that was going on. Engineers projected that under normal conditions, the project could take between 10 and 20 years. Now they had less than seven. In September 1991, the race was on. The first challenge, create enough level ground for the airport. Engineers had their eyes on a pair of rocky little islands called Chek Lap Kok and Lam Chow, 16 miles from downtown. But neither one of the islands was big enough to house the airport by itself. And they both were far too mountainous for long, flat runways. The solution? First, the mountains had to go. 